Hey guys, welcome back to Amanda's Favorites. Today we're going to do a comparison between two weekly planners. Um, they're both undated, Panda Planner Weekly and Passion Planner Weekly. Um, so these are the undated versions of both of these. These are weekly versions. They're both eight and a half by 11 planners, so they are pretty big. And let's get into it. I just left this little wrapper on for right now because I thought it kind of helped you see the difference, which planner is which, but we're gonna go ahead and take that off because it's kind of makes a squeaky noise. Okay, so let's get into this. First off, they're both bound planners. Passion Planner cover has more structure to it. It, I just think it's gonna hold up better. Panda Planner is thinner and it's just not gonna give you as much structure if you're trying to write on it on your lap or on the go, and it's just, it's thinner. Okay, Passion Planner only gives you one ribbon. It's in their green color because um, that's their Kickstarter color. So um, Panda Planner gives you three ribbons, okay? So that's good to know, that's in black. Let's get started. Um, with Passion Planner. I want to tell you right off though, I am not going to go into a full, you know, cover to cover review of each of these planners. We're just saying it, do a quick overview to show you some comparisons. And then if you're really interested in one of them, um, I will link the full review videos for each of them down below in the description box. Okay. So if we're not going to do the full walkthrough of each planner, because those videos will be linked down below. Okay, Passion Planner is all about finding your passions and setting your goals. So they give you a lot of info in the front um, about Passion Planner and how to set it up. Then they give you your passion roadmap, which you're gonna fill out. And they tell you how the planner is set up, why writing works, why prioritizing works. They show you some setups of your planning page and ideas. Then they give you a whole look at, because it's undated, um, which this year you probably don't have 2017 listed in it anymore, but this was last year in 2017 when I used this passion planner. Um, I planned for about five months in 2017 in this passion planner. So you'll see that when we flip through it. But they give you several years ahead so that it's undated. So if you don't use it and you've saved it, then you will have those year ahead looks. Passion Planner, same with Panda Planner, because it's undated, they give you all your months right up front. So this is your monthly layout. I'm going to show you a blank one, if I have one, because I think it's going to give you a better idea of what it looks like. So Passion Planner, when you're starting with a blank month, your boxes are a little bit more rectangle than they are square, which I don't mind at all. They have a good amount of room down here for personal projects, work projects, break it down, create a mind map of this month's game changer. And they talk all about that in the front and making your passion roadmap. This month's focus, personal and work, people to see, places to go, the not to do list. And one thing that I absolutely love about Passion Planner Monthly is they give you six rows here. So you never have to um, share a date. So you know when there's five weeks in a month, and things double up and sometimes you have to um, use half a box for each day at the end of the month. You never have to do this. So you always have extra boxes at the beginning and end of the month and you never have to double up days on your monthly boxes on Passion Planner. I love that. I love that there's room down here for lists and notes. I love the prompts that they give you here. In between each month a Passion Planner, so it is, you know, all your monthlies are up front, but it goes a monthly for you to fill in, and then it goes a monthly reflection. So you have a re two-page reflection, which goes back to your passion roadmap and all that goal planning in the front. And they ask you these same questions every month. Okay, whether you use it or not, that's up to you. I did use it when I was in this planner for some of the months and some of the months I didn't. So all your months are up front, which I actually find is really helpful in a bound book when there's no tabs. So you have all your monthlies and then you have your weeklies. And I will show you what some of my planning looked like, but first let's start with a blank week 
because I, I think that will help you to see it better. Um, okay, so Passion Planner, this is what our blank week looks like. This is a Sunday start. Passion Planner gives you a choice between a Sunday start and a Monday start, although I'm not sure in the undated if they give you that choice. I'll have to look on there. Um, but they have Sunday and Monday starts. Whichever one you pick, that's going to line up with your monthly calendars in the front also. So if you pick a Sunday start for your week, then your monthly calendar is also going to have a Sunday start. If you pick, um, which I, I told you on the undated, I'm not sure if they give you the choice of the Monday start also. That may only be in the dated. I will check and try to remember to put that in the video here. But anyway, this is a Sunday start, and so the calendar and the week starts on Sunday versus Monday. I prefer a Monday start, personally, for my week, but on my monthly calendar, I'm used to a Sunday start. Um, but with my Hobonichis, I've been getting more used to a Monday start there, too. But I just like a Monday start to my week because I have a lot of responsibilities at church, um, with a church job, which they call our calling in our church. And I work with the kids ages 3 to 12, 3 to 11, till they turn 12, running that program at church. And so I always have responsibilities on Sundays. Our Sundays are pretty busy. We go see family on Sundays twice a month. I have church meetings sometimes on Sundays. And then I have my responsibilities. And so I like to ha see that at the end of my week. Because if not, then I'm to Saturday and I have to turn and I have to see Sunday by turning. Um, so I like to see the whole week to see what my Sunday responsibilities are going to look like without having to turn the page. But that's just me. I can completely see actually though why it's good to turn your page on a Sunday because Sunday is kind of like you're looking ahead and scheduling your whole week and thinking about it. And so I can completely see why it's good to turn to a new page on Sunday. I've dealt with planners both ways. So like I said, I used this fashion planner for a little over five months last year. I really enjoyed my time in it. There is so much I love about passion planner. And if you've watched any of my passion planner videos, you know that. So you have little boxes to write in your date. Passion planner goes from 6 a.m. to 10.30 p.m. Now you do not have to use the time lines on the side. Many people even cover those up with washi tape and make them into tick boxes. Many people like me just ignore them and don't cover them up because the way my life is right now as a stay-at-home mom, I homeschool my youngest child. I have another child in public school and middle school, and I cannot time block my day because... It, it just doesn't work for me right now in this season of life. I don't need the time blocks. Um, I'll show you how I planned in this, but let's go over the page layout, finish that first. You write your week of, this week's focus, good things that happened. I love that box. It prompted me every single week to, as the week went by to list out good things that happened that week. They give you a quote every week and then a challenge to go with that quote. I really like that too. I don't mind that it takes up that space. Um, then you have a personal to-do list and a work to-do list. Of course, people cover these up and use them for all other different things. Um, you have a top priority, priority errands. These little boxes were actually made to try to write out how much time each task would take, but I myself just use them to tick off items as I know a lot of people did. I love the space of infinite possibility because it's just a blank space you can use for anything you want. I used it for my habit tracker, which you can print off from Passion Planner. Passion Planner has a lot of free printables. You can even print off this whole planner page and monthly. You can try out the planner by just printing out the page first. And I believe Panda Planner also has that. Lots of companies offer that, but Passion Planner has lots of other printables. So Passion Planner has this habit tracker printable, which I would print out and I actually cut it down because I didn't need to have as big a habit tracker. It's actually bigger and you could list a lot more habits. But I would cut it out and just tape it in here like this. And that was my weekly habit tracker in here. So this is kind of how I planned when I was in my Passion Planner. Um, 
I would choose one color per month. And I just like that because it helped me flip through my months and see um, really easily. So like May was the pinkish magenta purple and you can see that. And then we go to June and was the blue and that was vacation. And then July was red and blue. And then August I think was green, yeah. So that the things I wanted to highlight or write in marker or stand out, I put, you know, in that color of the month so that things wouldn't get too looking too crazy. And I like to always write in black ink usually. And that way my eyes are just, um, they're able to focus better. So what I ended up doing in here was I drew a line around the 9 a.m. mark. And it was easy to follow since there's lines on here. And I would put all my appointments or go-tos for the day up top there. And that way I knew if I had any errands I had to do that day or appointments or somewhere we were going. And if that was a blank, well, then I knew we didn't have something like that that day. And this just became an ongoing to-do list or things that I needed to get done that day. So there's much busier weeks. There's lighter weeks. Um, I didn't start drawing my line until I had been in here for a while, but that's just kind of how I figured out the best way to use it. And I can honestly tell you that every time I pull out this old passion planner, it was just from last year, but I get nostalgic feeling and I really loved my time in passion planner. And I'm sure I will be back in it someday at some point because there's, I love the hugeness of the eight and a half by 11. It's so big. They also have a smaller size, which is an A5 size. So it's half this page size. Um, but I love the hugeness of this. There's so much room to write. I love how you have all this space at the bottom for your lists and everything. It's just, it's a setup that works for me. Okay, so let's compare it to Panda Planner because I actually had two subscribers ask to see this um, review in one video, a side-by-side -side of Panda Planner and Passion Planner. So let's see this. I know that tons of people love Panda Planner because my Panda Planner daily video has a lot of views and actions on it. And I honestly didn't expect it to be such a popular video. So that tells you Panda Planner is well loved. You get Panda Planner on Amazon. First, let me just say, if you ever buy a passion planner, I would love for you to put my email address, which is down in the description box, Amanda's favorites at whitleyspace.com. They have a place for a referral box at checkout. If you check out with Passion Planner, I would love for you to put my email in as a referral. That is how I earn extra planners, and I give all those away. Um, they're always an undated Sunday start black, but I give them away in giveaways, and I also have given away some to my um, church group at church for the youth to have. Um, so I love to be able to re-gift those. Panda Planners on Amazon, they also make a daily version, but this is the weekly version. Also, you can find a lot about Passion uh, Panda Planner um, at Panda Planner, mypandaplanner.com. So they have a lot of notes on how to use this planner, just like um, Passion Planner has. Then they have a big clear label. You're going into your monthly sections. Okay, what do your monthly sections look like? Okay, in Panda Planner, you have the little um, circle. You have bigger boxes than Passion Planner. That is to write your date in, okay? You have a habit tracking box for every day of the month, so you can tick it off. Like you pick one habit for that month, and then you can have a nice big monthly overview to look at your whole month. I do believe Passion Planner now makes a monthly habit tracker, or I know they do, on their free printables that you can also put in your planner. Um, I was gonna show you two blank, these blank months side by side. So you can see. So Panda Planner, you have bigger squares. Passion Planner, it's more of a rectangle. You don't have the little habit tracker, but you could always put that in your Passion Planner and they make a monthly habit tracker you can actually put in here too. Okay, so Panda Planner has just your note section on the side and some stuff at the bottom we'll talk about. And Passion Planner has your stuff on this left side and then the list at the bottom that we talked about. So Panda Planner says, um, that's just notes. This is the habit you're focusing on this month. 
That's your monthly focus. You write in your month there. And then they tell you what's your plan for the month. This month's goals, your reason why, distractions to avoid, this month's wins. I love when planners prompt you to do that. Um, so this is your review. This is your plan for the month on this side. This is your review at the end of the month. So this month's wins, insights gained, and how I'll improve. I like the way that's divided up, your plan and your review for the month, okay? And I think it would also be cool to look back every month over those and see how you progressed. But that is similar to your two-page monthly spread. Um, it's just bigger in Passion Planner where you're thinking about the last month and what you're going to do different the next month. So that's kind of the same type of thing. It's just in a smaller um, scale. And then you just have room for a notes or a list that month. Now, both of these have great paper. Panda Planner has 100 GSM paper, I believe. I will check that. Passion Planner this year has bumped their paper up to 120 GSM. Last year when I used it in this one, it is only 100 GSM and it was great. Amazing paper. I have absolutely no complaints. So both of these planners have great paper. And Passion Planner has even upped theirs more this year. Um, I just did a pen test in there on that month. So you have all 12 of your months up here up front, and you have nothing in between them in Panda Planner. So in your Passion Planner, you have your monthly reflections in between each month, right? There's your monthly reflections in between each month. But in Panda Planner, you have nothing in between each month. So it's just all your monthlies. Okay, then... There is a clear break, and this is why they give you the three ribbons, one to mark your monthly, one to mark your weekly, and then just an extra one if um, you need to mark somewhere in between. Um, okay, so here is your Panda Planner weekly layouts. Here's what they look like. All right, so for each week, you have this two-page spread. It's kind of like planning your week. So it's a different concept than Passion Planner. Passion Planner does not have this at all. So for each week, you have this dot grid. It can be journaling, reflection, creativity page. It could be listing. It could be goals. Whatever you need to make it. Okay. Then you do a review of your last week right here. And you have a day and date for the top. So you have big wins, five for the week. How I'll improve, two things. Then you have planning your upcoming week. Things I will do to make this week great. Personal, work, family, friends, and relationship. I'm looking forward to three things. Habits I'm focusing on developing. Learn something new. Passion project. Then you have room for four projects here in pretty big boxes for the next week. And your top goals for the next week. Five top goals. So this is something Passion Planner doesn't do. They do not have this in between. Um, for every week, you have this two-page spread to review your last week, to plan your upcoming week, to look at your projects and goals and have this extra page here. Here is what your weekly layout looks like. Okay, um, you have a space to write your date here, and you have your habit box to check off even on your week. So whatever habit you're working on that month, you check it off on your monthly and your weekly. So you have a view both places. It's always on your mind. Over here, you have what daily habit are you working on? You list it there. What's your weekly focus? Two challenges you're giving yourself that week. Or maybe, I even thought of it this way, what is challenging you? What is hard for you that week? And maybe how you can overcome that. Um you know, think of solutions to those challenges, but that's another way to look at it. Um, weekly tasks with just tick boxes, a blank note section. So Panda Planner is different in that all of those things are on your left here and you don't have the room for the list and everything at the bottom here, but then you do have the two page spread before every week. So you have plenty of room in that you have that. Okay, so here's how your day goes. Um, I'm grateful for three things every day. I'm excited about two things every day. I think that's a great way to start out your morning, personally. Um, priorities, I love to have a top three priorities for my day. I have kind of a whole video about my one, two, three 
um, planning method. So I love that. Then you have your schedule, seven to nine. So the difference with Passion Planner in this is that the schedule is not something you can ignore on the day and make a task list. I could make a task list out of this for sure, but they have a whole separate section just for your schedule. Today's wins, I love ending the day like that. Um, I don't consistently ever do that. And if I was using a planner that had that in there, then it would force me to think about my three wins that day. And, you know, sometimes I do that in my journaling at night, but not every night. And I think it's just such, those are really positive ways to start and end your day. And you would think that they, you know, oh, that's not a big deal. But when I have done them, those make a really big impact um, for me personally on my day. And I don't think you can say that they don't make an impact until you've actually tried it consistently for a couple weeks, maybe two weeks. And then how I'll improve one thing for the next day. Um, so I really do like this setup. It is different from Passion Planner. Um, they are both goal-oriented planners, but in, you know, very different ways, even though they look similar. So let me find a blank week in the Passion Planner. And I wanted to show you guys kind of how it looks different. So even though they're both the same size, um, like I said, you have all this room for lists down here in your space of infinite possibility. You don't have that on your weekly page here. You know, you have a smaller list and note section, but you do have this for your entire week planning out. So it's just, you, you have plenty of space to write. It's just in different ways. It's formatted differently. And so each day, um, like I said, you can use the timed columns or in 30 minute increments from Passion Planner or you don't have to. You, of course, don't have to use this timed schedule, um, but I would more likely use it as a timed schedule, but I don't have that many appointments, so there might just be like three days a week that something's written on, um, because I don't always write down my son's violin or our Wednesday night church activities. I don't always write those down because that's something that happens every week, so I don't have to normally remember that. It's really stuck in my head, but... Um, I really like things from both of these planners. They are both great undated planners. And you guys know that I love undated planners for the reason that they're so flexible. You can start it and stop it and you're not wasting weeks. You can buy it at any time of year and you don't feel like you're wasting it. You can also double up on weeks where you're gonna use um, two weeks for like, um, one is for personal and one is for work or one is for fitness, tracking food and fitness and one is for work. So you have everything in one planner. Now I will tell you this, if you're doubling up weeks, then of course um, you'll have too many of your two page weekly reflections that will kind of mess that up. Um, and then of course your planner won't last as long. But I just have to mention those things that an undated is really flexible. I also like it because you add in your own colors for even for all the dates. And I like to pick a color a month, like I showed you. And that's just something that um, I enjoy doing in my planner. So you can make an undated really fun because there's so much room to add into these black and white planners. Okay, so let me just show you what's at the end of these planners. Passion Planner, you have a good chunk of paper um, you have blank paper with no lines or anything. You have some blank paper and then you have some, um, graph grid paper. So you have a good chunk of paper. I think it's about 30 pages or something like that. Then you have an accordion pocket at the back of your passion planner. That's really nice to have. And then you have a band on your passion planner. And like I said, I used my passion planner for over a little over five months in 2017 and I was not careful with it. I didn't take it a lot of places. Mainly it stayed laid out on my desk open the entire time, the entire time, 24 hours a day, which I feel constrained the spine a lot, but it did great. It held up great. I love this book. Um, the Panda Planner, let's see what's at the end of the Panda Planner. Uh, at the end, let's get here. You have a few notes pages, not that many. So you have a few, like, like four or five note pages, and that's it. Designed with love in Boston, printed with care in China. 
you have an accordion pocket, much like the Passion Planner one in here, pretty much the same. And you have a band, pretty much the same as Passion Planner also. And like I said, the cover doesn't have quite as much structure as Passion Planner, but it really feels like it will hold up for you. It just has a little bit more bend in it because it's just not quite as thick as the Passion Planner cover. But they both bend. And these are both really great planners. Like I said, Panda Planner also makes a daily, and I will link that video below um, to show you my daily uh, review. And Panda Planner is on Amazon, and I will link that below. Also, and Passion Planner will be linked below too. Okay, guys, thanks for the request that you guys wanted to see in this video. Uh, they're very similar planners, yet, you know, they have enough specific differences that I think everyone would kind of have an opinion on which one would work better for them. And it's really just that. It's personal opinion and what season of life you're in and which one will work better for you. Um, they're both wonderful planners that um, I think would function great. All right. Thanks for watching, you guys. Happy planning. Let me know down below if you have used either one of these planners. I'd love to hear what your favorite thing about the planner you used was and if you've used it more than a year if you're going to stay with it or if you're wanting to switch it up all right guys thanks for watching happy planning till next time bye bye